Is this the most advanced power bank ever made? Can it quickly charge some of the popular smartphones out there? And is the Shark Geek 100 worth the money? Let's inspect! This, my dear friends, is a power bank, the coolest power bank I've ever tried, called Shark Geek 100. And it's been on my radar ever since it got released on Kickstarter, but it was mostly the price which was holding me off. So when Charge, the company which is manufacturing this, approached me and offered sponsoring a video so that I can show it to you on the channel, I thought it might be a good idea, especially after negotiating with them so that I can retain my ability to talk about the positives, but also discuss the negative sides of the Shark Geek 100. So yes, there's going to be an endorsement, but at the same time, that was a great opportunity to make a thorough inspection of this body and also test it, how quickly it can charge most of 2024's flagships. Let's do it! Launched as a crowdfunding project, the Storm 2 is now called Shark Geek 100. Apparently the company changed its name, the product is still the same though, and two years after going out, we have enough of good feedback and information about how it performs in the long run. I guess the only meaningful competitors will be brands such as Anchor, who have good reputation about power banks. Unboxing experience is good, plain box and lots of technical data on the back. It's a geeky product, so I guess most of us are really here for the specs. A detailed user guide is present, and here's the transparent battery pack. For the record, there still aren't that many see-through battery packs these days, so kudos to Charge for being honest about what is inside. The part that attracts me the most is the display, and we'll check more details about it in just a moment. There are in total three USB ports that you may use, and one of them can also be an input port. The yellow cable looks awesome, there even is a carrying pouch. Given the weight of the pack, this is a good idea. You can recognize some of the components inside just by looking through the plastic, and I've narrowed down the most important out of this. 25,600 mAh total capacity, 100 watts maximum charging speed, supported up to three devices for charging simultaneously, a smart IPS display, it is powered by Samsung Mate cells, has tolerable dimensions and weight, and is covered by a 12-month warranty. Yeah, the specs are definitely on the bright side. It's a geeky product, so of course, Charge had to put a lot of effort into making it attractive. And 100 watts of quick charging capacity is quite a big deal even nowadays. And yes, we have those true champions like Xiaomi, OnePlus, Vivo and so on, who can go beyond the 100 watt barrier, but it's also through that you know, smartphones such as the Galaxy S24, the iPhone 14, 15 series, etc. and the Google Pixel line, they vary somewhere between 20 and 40 watts, meaning that this should be comfortably more than enough in order to recharge these smartphones. And I can't wait to show you all these results because some of them have been very surprising. In terms of components inside, we have rather good chips and excellent protection. Uh, the whole thing is sealed into anti-explosion and anti-fire coating and it's transparent. So in the end of the day, you can, if you're curious, get to learn more about the components used inside and also you can find information about the cells. These are Samsung made cells. These are not the most premium Samsung made cells, but definitely pretty well corresponding the specifications and the characteristics which are expected from Shargeek 100. So now it's time to explore all the features and do some more testing. As a starter, the display and its features are invaluable about the type of work that I do. In one of my recent dashcam reviews, I've used it to determine the power consumption in standby mode. You can also closely monitor the battery capacity, and the real-time data input guarantees that Shark Geek 100 doesn't cheat about actual capacity. The results achieved with smartphones fast charging have been really interesting. I have to admit that some of them were really unexpected. A quick recap of the current situation with fast charging technologies shows that besides the original Quick Charge by Qualcomm, there also are some other variations and alternatives that certain vendors use. Samsung Galaxy S24 is the first one in here. 25W charging is what it can do at its best, and it is achievable through each one of the ports of Shark Geek 100. 
Out of these three, C1 is the fastest, it's capable of PD 100 watts, and the others are a bit slower, but since each one of them is faster than the maximum supported charging speed by Galaxy S24, it explains the consistency. Google Pixel 8 Pro shows about the same results. Keep in mind that most phones charge at their maximum speeds at battery levels below 50%, so the closer you are to the 100% threshold, the smaller the significance of quick charging gets. With Apple iPhone 13, it's been steady 20 watts. I have to admit that whatever comes now is much more interesting and rather surprising. iCode 12, which is made by Vivo and uses proprietary technology called flash charging, can go as fast as 100 watts being connected to the original wall charger. And while the phone detects flash charging with certain types of cables when linked to the Shargeek 100, at no point of time I was able to get more than 17 or 18 watts. It's fair to mention that iQOO, Vivo and OnePlus are very restrictive about their chargers and kind of force you to buy their own proprietary gear in order to make this work. With Xiaomi, when using the original Shageek 100 yellow cable, I was comfortably getting quick charge with 30 watt speeds, but the original Mi cable, which uses a Type A, is capable of providing up to 17 or 18 watts, which is slower. What is even more bizarre is that Poco X6 Pro tends to charge a little quicker than Xiaomi 14, with the latter one supposedly having 90 watt charging, which is theoretically faster. Another big note here, Xiaomi use their proprietary cables and are the only vendor transferring such a big amount of power over a Type-A port, which somewhat explains the behavior. On top, using a Type-A port is devastatingly slow with any of the current Xiaomi devices. The conclusion is quite simple, with exception for Qualcomm's Quick Charge 4, the current state of fast charging is a mess, with some vendors using proprietary solutions which are great to have, but sometimes may lead to complications. With Google and Samsung playing it fair and properly adopting the Quick Charge functions, they're gonna be recharged much quicker, as opposed to the settled champions such as OnePlus, Realme and Xiaomi. If we think about laptops and other gear, ah, this is a lot more straightforward. 45 watts for MacBook Pro series, and you're still gonna have more than 50 watts for charging other peripherals, such as action cameras, drones, and so on. You know, make sure you utilize the available capacity. Reminding me to show you the performance after 20 minutes under maximum load. Not bad. I've seen reports about overheating, never managed to achieve with my unit though. But hey, in terms of features, that's not all. There are some configuration options, like you can customize the display, and you can even have a look at the status of each of the battery pairs and their current health condition, which is pretty neat. I promised to talk about the drawbacks, and while these proprietary charging results are totally off charges table, you can well notice that it is not the perfect match to some of the Chinese smartphones. To be on the safe side, make sure that your smartphone supports Quick Charge 4. The Shargeek 100 unfortunately doesn't have a smartphone app, doesn't seem to support any firmware updates and modifications, perhaps the latter one idea could be somewhat risky as well. Also, according to the All Things One Place channel, the efficiency of this charge is around 83%, and in the end, I'd love to see more accessories, such as a proprietary bumper case. So, in the end, definitely the best looking power bank that money can buy in 2024. This is the Shargeek 100. Yes, it is expensive. Yes, it is a good one. And yes, it's definitely a keeper. And although it might be not the top performing power bank in its class, it not only delivers, I think it comfortably fits within the expected characteristics that are promised by Sharj. So, yeah, it's totally something I would recommend. Although, given the price, before going for such an expensive product, you should really ask yourself the question, do you need this piece of tech? Which kind of counts for pretty much every other piece of tech you're about to buy. On the other hand, if you're looking to buy someone a nice gift, especially if that person is a geek, this is definitely a super cool gift, especially if you know that the person is a fan of these transparent ideas. So that's my take on the Shargeek 100 and thank you very much for watching this video. In case you enjoyed, you know how to show me your appreciation and in case you want to share about your opinion in regard to this power bank or anything else, comments is the right place to do it. Should you want to buy it, check the video description for more information. 
I'm the Tech Mishka and look forward to seeing you in the next video, so subscribe. Bye!